Welcome to Electro Online. Trying to determine what's actually happening inside the core of a super red giant, we're talking about stars that are greater than eight times the mass of the sun, well, it's not entirely guesswork because we do have a basic understanding of nuclear fusion, but we should call it modeling what's happening inside the core because we really don't know all the various details and exactly what is happening. But let's take a look at it this way. Initially, when the very large star, be a blue giant, turns into a red giant, and of course, at this point, it's going to be a super red giant, or a red super giant, whichever way you want to call it. Well, we know what's happening there is that helium is being converted to carbon at a very fast rate, much, much faster than will happen when our sun turns into a red giant. And so we know that that process will not take very long perhaps 10 million years max, and for the very large stars, it will even be less than that. So then as the core begins to fill with carbon, and that process comes to an end, then that core begins to collapse. But as that core collapses, it generates additional heat, so that higher temperatures are reached such that, such that the next fusion process can happen. The temperature around that carbon core also reaches temperatures where helium can be converted to carbon. And beyond that, there'll be another region around that core, that's part of the core, where hydrogen can be converted to helium. So what you get is you get these successive regions deeper and deeper into the star where more and more fusion processes are taking place. So what you end up with then is you end up with kind of like a shell system where higher and higher and higher elements or greater or more massive and more massive elements are being fused as time goes on, as temperatures are going up and up inside the core. So we end up with these regions where we have hydrogen burning into helium, helium burning into carbon, carbon burning into oxygen, and so forth. And of course, we use the term burning, which is not really what's going on. We are, of course, talking about nuclear fusion, but the term burning is still being used. Now, when we take a look at this chart, or not chart, but this table right here, we can see that when you bring hydrogen, helium together, two of them, you get beryllium, and another helium, you get carbon, and another helium, you get oxygen, and so forth. So that's how we successively can build up heavier and heavier elements to the process of adding, through the fusion process, another helium nucleus, another alpha particle. Is this what's happening inside the core? Well, to some extent, yes. But because helium is not going to be as abundant in the inner core, there's other processes that will take place in such a way that helium will indeed convert to carbon, but also potential to oxygen. Carbon will convert into oxygen, sodium, magnesium. Neon will convert to magnesium, oxygen into silicon, neon, sulfur, argon, and calcium, and so forth, to all these various nuclear fusion processes. Some of the ones that we can think of are probably a carbon fusing with a carbon to form magnesium, an oxygen fusing with an oxygen to form sulfur, and a silicon plus a silicon fusing into nickel. So you can see that it doesn't necessarily have to be the stepwise process. It's probably going to be a combination of processes as the heavy elements are being as, as these heavy, heavier elements are being fused, then those will then fuse into the next element and so forth in various combinations. What probably happens is when the two silicons combine under very high temperatures into nickel, now what happens is the nickel will then, uh, then decompose into co cobalt because the nickel will be unstable. It'll uh, go into cobalt, will also be unstable, and eventually into stable iron. And so that's how eventually the inner core begins to fill with iron. And of course, that's the key process in these heavy stars. Once the core begins to fill with iron, Iron cannot be fused into the next heavy element. There are indeed processes such as the neutron capture process, which can potentially can convert iron into cobalt and cobalt into nickel and so forth. But by and large, when you try to fuse iron with another element through the nuclear fusion process, well, that requires energy. That's going to be a, what we call an endothermic a reaction where heat will be pulled out of the core, the core will cool down, as the core cools down there's no longer the radiation pressure to keep it up, and the whole core will collapse. So how much will these various stages take? Well, the typical stage for hydrogen to helium when it's a, when it's a main sequence star, that takes about 10 million years for the very large stars. Then once we start converting helium into carbon, when the star is converted into a red giant or a red supergiant, notice it only takes about a million years to convert all the helium into carbon. 
It takes about a thousand years to convert the carbon into oxygen. It takes about three years to convert neon into magnesium, about a third of a year to convert oxygen into silicon, and only about five days to convert all the silicon in the core into nickel, which then converts to cobalt and iron. And once you have the core full of iron, it only takes a fraction of a second for the whole core to collapse. Now, is that exactly what happens in the core? That's why we call it a model. It's probably a fairly good model, but we don't have all the details. But we do realize that there will be successive spheres around the inner core that will eventually fill with iron, where we have silicon being burned into iron, oxygen to silicon, carbon to oxygen, helium into carbon, and hydrogen into helium. As the star reaches its final stage, where eventually the star will explode in a type 2 supernova. We'll get you some more details of all that later. But that's essentially what happens in the supermassive stars. We have these various fusion processes slowly converting all the way from hydrogen into eventually a core full of iron. And that is how it happens. Not very long. Oh, <laughs> it goes very quick at the end. Yeah, once, once it goes to the red giant stage, it's been about a million years converted helium to carbon. At that point, it goes really quick. A thousand years for carbon, and at that point, it's a matter of just a few days, a few months, a few days, and the whole star goes kaboom. Wondering if that's going to happen to Beetlejuice. Who? Beetlejuice. Oh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is acting very weird these days. So, who knows? We might see a supernova there soon enough. That's true. <laughs>